What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and this one to give you guys a very quick update on what's going on with the markets, what's happening with SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to talk about the big bang earnings that have come out, what's going on with the option chain for SPY, which you should be watching for as time progresses for the data. But before I break the devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me mention that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. And the offer ends very soon, just a couple of weeks. Anyways, for Tesla, uh, for spying the overall market, we're seeing a little dip right now. After we got these bank earnings, they weren't the strongest overall, kind of mixed here and there. Some, for the most part, they were more strong than weak, if anything, but we did see some guidances that were kind of mixed. So I would say they were kind of all over the place, a little bit more good than bad, but I want to break down more details about them in just the next couple of minutes. Uh, but if anything, moving forward, the market's dipping a bit, but I'm going to be watching the support over here to see if we can try to get a rebound. There's a very good chance the market will rebound and try to fill this gap later on, but I'll talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. So for data at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 30 minutes after the market opens, we have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report, the five-year inflationary expectations, and all this important data coming out. So look for some volatility at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see if this launches the market in the ops direction or not. We also have some Fed speakers at the end of the day, but for now, focus on the Michigan data coming out at 10 o'clock a.m. For the big bank earnings, we have J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, City, and a bunch of these others. For J.P. Morgan Chase, they did relatively well, if anything. Uh, the reason for this is because when you look at the data, uh, earnings per share was at $4.44, beating expectations. Revenue also beat expectations. And in terms of their overall guidance, uh, they were telling us overall the same thing as what we saw previously, which is the fact that their net income might not be the strongest. But despite that, they beat on earnings and their expectations are still showing uh, decent things right here, topping most analysts' expectations. So this is actually a little bit more positive for them, uh, beating expectations for the most part, beating uh, what guidance was projecting before, and seeing revenue rise 8%. So I would say they did very, very well. So that's good for JP Morgan. Wells Fargo, on the other hand, had good earnings but mixed guidance. So what is good is, let me just say that they beat on EPS and revenue. Net income did decrease by 8% in the quarter, however, which is not the best of news because of the impact of higher interest rates. So right here, they beat on EPS by $1.26 is what we ended up getting. And then revenue is $20.86 billion above expectations. Net income for 2024 is expected to post a decline in the 7 to 9% range. Uh, unchanged from prior guidance. And we also saw net income decline to about $4.62 billion. Uh, we also saw some more changes right over here. Uh, not to mention the fact that their investments have contributed higher for their revenue. But from what I'm seeing right here, they also set aside $938 million as provision for credit losses. So not the strongest of things so far. I would say that their guidance was kind of mixed right over here because of what they're setting aside, not to mention the fact that their net income decreased about $4.62 billion. Not the best of news there. They also have, they, they're expecting a little decline in their guidance, which is not that great, but they did beat on EPS and revenue, so this is a little bit better. So I would say mixed earnings from Wells Fargo. BlackRock did relatively well. They topped the Q1 consensus estimates, beating on EPS of $9.81, 47 cents better than any analyst expectations. Revenue is also better than expected at $4.73 billion, up 11%. And we also have a record $10.5 trillion of assets under management and $1.4 trillion year over year driven by consistent organic growth. They also built a lot of momentum. They saw some growth, which is not bad whatsoever. And the guidance is looking pretty good. So good for BlackRock. Then we have Citigroup. Citigroup, of all things, ended up topping estimates for the first quarter revenue, better than what Wall Street expected. They beat on EPS with $1.58. They beat on revenue of $21 billion. However, I just want to note stats. Their revenue slipped 2%. And for guidance, their fixed income has been dipping a little bit as well. And once again, for guidance, wasn't the strongest overall kind of mix from what I saw. So I just want to be kind of quick with that. The full year, this is right over here, the full year revenue and guidance did end up meeting uh, expectations that they as they maintained their targets. So not bad whatsoever. I would say that they beat on EPS and revenue and their guidance was so-so. So for the most part, not bad. So most of the banks did relatively well, if anything, from what I'm seeing. Some of them not as great in terms of guidance, but that's what I'm seeing so far. As far as SPY goes, we have about... 
uh, 450,000 calls expiring, over 800,000 puts expiring with a 1.75 puts call ratio. 516 is also max pain. So what does this mean for us? There's a very good chance that SPY will try to rebound very, very soon. It has come down a bit, but do not forget that if a possible slanted inverse head and shoulders like structure, watch this 515 resistance at 516.5, watch 512.5 as support. I think it could either dip a little bit more and then try to rebound or kind of rebound from here. Going to be looking for a push to fill this gap. I could see an attempt to get back higher on SPY. I'm going to be looking for that. We are dipping a bit, but then look and see it for an attempt to rebound. I find that to be very probable. For Tesla, we're coming down to about 172. We could dip a little bit lower to about 170.5, but then I do anticipate that some buyers will attempt to step in and try to push Tesla back up to higher levels, just like how we got a nice bounce at the end of the day today. I'm sorry, end of the day yesterday. So watch and see resistance at 172.5 and 175 above that. I'll have to see if Tesla can try to break resistance or not. It may dip a little bit more, but then we could continue to go a little higher from here. Make sure you watch 170.5 as support. Uh, I think that Tesla may dip a bit more and then try to make its way back up. For the QQQ, I'm seeing something very similar. We're trying to hold our 50 EMA and also this one, uh, the 440 support. If we lose 440, look for 438 as key support. If we hold 440, look for a little rebound to 442. Uh, and then also higher levels such as 444. We could dip a little bit more, but then look for an attempt to rebound after that. So we'll have to see how things go moving forward. So that's going to be key for the QQQ. I think that for the QQQ, there's a very good chance that uh, we see an attempt to rebound. Uh, let's just see how it holds the 440 support. So give it a little bit more time. But I think that we're going to see an attempt to rebound a bit, especially thanks to NVIDIA. NVIDIA is still holding support right over here. Watch for a test of about, this is like 894 is shared to 8. 85. I think that 892 is going to be key. We have this range. We might come down a little bit more, but then we're going to be looking for a bounce in this 892 to 885 area. And we'll have to see how NVIDIA tries to react. Could see a retest of 900. So look for a little dip first, then attempt to get back to 900 to 908. And we'll see how it goes from there if we do attempt to get another push higher. I think that it may attempt to bounce soon. So give it some time and we'll see how things go. For Apple, we're holding up right now at 174. If we hold above this, we could be looking for a pushback up to 176. If we lose this, look for 172.5. So I'm thinking either it bounces off 172.5 or 174. If we try to make our way up to 176, I'll be watching for that very, very carefully. All right, guys. So my video is kind of late today. I'm sorry about that. I was running a little bit late. So I want to end the video from here. I'm not going to go over the others in as much detail. So we're going to be kind of quick. All right. So just a few more uh, meta. We're going to be looking to see if it could hold. 517 is our support and 515. If we do hold these supports, look for a push to 522 then 525. Uh, I think it's going to try to rebound a bit. And then, you know, Amazon is still holding 186.8. So it could dip a little bit more. If we hold this, look for a rebound. If we lose this, we're going to start dipping. I think it might actually bounce off 186.8 very, very soon. So I'm seeing some attempts to bounce. Those are the last ones. Anyways, that is it for the video. Okay, officially, I need to end this video quickly because it's kind of late. So I just want to thank you all for listening. Make sure you guys have a really, really awesome day and you watch support. The market could attempt to rebound. So make sure you're very, very careful. Uh, the bank, <coughs> excuse me, the bank earnings were not bad overall. Uh, I would say that they were more good than bad. We just had some mixed guidances here and there, but we saw more beats than misses. If anything, we'll have to see how things go from here. All right, thank you for listening. I'll see you guys in just a couple of hours and peace out.